everyone, Rua here, with an addendum to my previous job guide, my monk guide that is. I mentioned during my Q&A video that my use of and my sets while using certain abilities has changed, and since YouTube no longer lets people annotate their own videos to correct things, I should really put this short video out to address it. I pointed out in the overview of my monk guide that certain abilities needed adjusting, and with the December update they certainly were. Impetus was indirectly buffed by the accuracy cap on hand-to-hand -hand weapons going up. The real big change here though was that Monk can now use the Imperium body in their TP set while Impetus is active for some pretty devastating results. Although the base stats of the plus one body seem moot compared to what else is available in that slot, it's that Impetus augment which makes it so good. By itself, Impetus increases attack by 2 and critical hit rate by 1% for each successive hit that lands, but with the Imperium body locked in while active, Impetus also increases accuracy by 2 and critical hit damage by 1%. Something else this change has opened up is using Impetus along with footwork during a Zerg. I mentioned during my guide that Monk is meant to stagger its abilities much like a warrior to get maximum damage output. But when a monk really wants to crank up the damage, now they can. For this set, when both abilities are active, you want to add the relic legs and the artifact feet to your TP set along with the Empyrean body. Impetus and footwork stack together not only increase the rate the Impetus counter will rise due to a better chance of kick attacks going off, but those kicks themselves are going to hurt. If using both abilities like this, I'd use dragon kick and tornado kick while footwork is up, reverting to victory smite and ascetic's fury when it falls. By then you'll have built up a pretty strong impetus chain, so those weapon skills are going to hurt. That reminds me actually, you'll want to put the Empyrean body in your set for Victory Spite and Ascetic's Fury now, since critical hit damage pretty much translates over to weapon skill damage, four weapon skills which can critical hit that is. It's the closest thing to a pre-WSD nerf Victory Smite you're gonna get really. Honestly though, it's just nice to see that Monk has at least something more to offer now in situations where there needs to be a lot more damage output in a short space of time. If you know you'll need to amp it up for a certain phase of a fight, plan ahead and save footwork for then. Yeah, you're probably sick of the sight of Neek by now, but he's really one of my favourite punching bags. The accuracy change in its buff to impetus can really be noticed on high-end content. Let's say I level 145 or over. Impetus takes a good few hits to really pick up steam, so opening up a tough battle with 100 fists is a really good way to go now. Remember, you need to land 50 consecutive hits to fully cap out Impetus' effect, but with a monk's attack speed on 100 fists, chances are you'll get close to that before you miss, if you miss at all. Try to time focus for this tactic as well, as that accuracy bonus is going to help you out a lot, but time it better than I do in this clip, would you? Even when 100 fists falls, you'll still have a solid stack of impetus hits built up, so your damage won't fall off that hard. Plus you can also fall back on the aforementioned footwork trick if you need to. I think this clip here demonstrates just how much damage a monk going full throttle can put out, especially without any other player support either. Remember, I'm only using trusts in this clip. The other ability we need to go over is counter stance. Sure, the accuracy cap going up also buff counter rates, you've heard that from me before. But here's the thing, impetus works on counter attacks, and counter attacks also work for impetus's cumulative total. I've actually created a completely new set for when impetus and counter stance are both active, and the results have been devastating. Counter attack damage is increased during counter stance if you have job points invested in it, and since counter stance will cap out the counter trait completely when it's with the relic feat, you have a lot of leeway to work with when creating sets. My counter stance set you're seeing here is actually an amalgamation of my Impetus TP set and a straight PDT DT set, because you need to balance out that 50% defensive drop from counter stance in case attacks somehow get through. That's a steep drop. Honestly though, apart from the staunch Tashlam and the defending ring, pretty much all these pieces would be used in a conventional Impetus set anyway. I used the Sagita for my set, but really the SU4, the plus one version that is, is more than good enough for this set to get the job done. Be sure to put it on the APAF for double damage and the store TP, as chances are you lost a fair bit of store TP in making the counter stance set work. You can also probably use the Svarai for this set. You get stronger counters as well if you rank 15'd it. You need to use a second DT ring though, probably Vocane. Now here's the set, and a fully buff counter stance in action. When you're using counter stance you need to know a few things. Firstly, do not try it on something which can use lengthy stuns or can petrify you frequently. 
You can't counter when you're stunned or petrified. So what you reduce to is a melee who has lost half of his defense for no reason at all until it wears. Do this and you'll get dropped like a bad habit. Secondly, use it with Mantra, as Mantra's HP boost could mean the difference between life and death. It's very unlikely that a mob will get a string of attacks past counter stance, but if it does, Mantra's effect could save you. You also have Chakra to hand if you need a massive heal instantly. Thirdly, you have Inner Strength available as a hard counter against a mob using 100 Fists or Mighty Strikes, both SPs which could really wipe you out quickly if you get unlucky. Inner Strength breaks the 80% rate cap on counter and puts it to 100%, so don't be afraid to use it. Fourthly and finally, when you have the mob's attention you need to keep it, as counter is no good if you're not even the main target. You can either use 100 Fists and go to town on the mob, using counter stance to add to your hate gain, because if you're not getting hit, you're not losing hate. Otherwise, if you're in a party with a thief, they can trick attack you and manage the group's hate levels to make sure the mob stays on you. This will also work with a ranger using decoy shot as well. You can also have a scholar healer use Caper Emissarius on you to instantly drop all the party's hate onto you. But for the love of God, make sure that you're ready to handle it, because if you get Caper Emissarius used on you, then you drop dead. No one in the group is going to have any hate, and things are going to get wild quickly. Counterstance tanking won't work so well if your group has a dedicated tank job like a paladin or a rune fencer, but I found it works really well in turning Monk into a nasty off tank if the main tank dies. I really hope I've showcased its application here, as I've been having a real blast with it lately. This brings me to the end of this follow up video. Monk's in a very interesting place right now, and I personally think it's in a far better place than the one it's occupied for a while. I've said pretty much everything I can on the job unless it gets patched again in the coming months, so I'll be stopping the Monk videos until then. My next large project will be the Blue Mage Guide. This one has been a very long time coming, and I do apologise in its delay, but it's almost here. Aside from update videos, it should be the next video you see. I'll see you all then.